ophthalmologists, optometrists, and those involved in caring for the eyes in countries around the world are speaking in one voice, saying it loud and clear to everyone. Beat invisible glaucoma, and it's all to expand global awareness of glaucoma, which is described as a silent thief of sight. Thank you for joining us on Health News. I am Yomi Otaibi. Globally, too many people are said to be unaware they have glaucoma, a disease that affects the eyes. The global impact of glaucoma is recorded in a World Health Organization bulletin, and it shows that glaucoma is responsible for approximately 5.2 million blindness, 15% of the total burden of blindness in the world. In a moment, I'll be having a chat with a consultant ophthalmologist with the General Hospital in Solo, Lagos, Dr. Chigoze Mbaruga, on the need for regular eye checks. Thank you so much for speaking with us on Health News. You're welcome. It's all about um, care of the eyes and um, the world's attention is on glaucoma. So yeah. tell us about glaucoma. Glaucoma is a term that refers to a group of eye diseases which damage the optic nerve, which is the main nervous supply to the eye. And that's what transmits impulses of visual fibers or visual information from the eye to the brain. And it's because of the optic nerve we're able to look at something and the brain interprets what we are seeing to our bodies, ourselves, our consciousness. And uh, this time we're focusing a lot on glaucoma. There's uh, the World Glaucoma Week from March 9th to 15th. And we're trying to uh, make people more aware of this eye disease. Glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible blindness worldwide. And it's the second leading cause of blindness after cataract. And research has shown that in the developed world, almost half of people that have glaucoma are not aware. We are talking about third world countries. And it's thought that in developing countries, about 90% of people who have glaucoma are outside care. They don't know they have glaucoma. So we're trying to get people to know that there's a need to check for this, uh, this disease. There are several types of it. Uh, the one that there's a cause for, which we call secondary glaucoma, we can identify. Uh, problem, they may have an inflammation, they may have a trauma. We can actually identify something that led to the glaucoma. But more importantly, the primary type where there is no known etiology, apart from possibly a genetic predisposition to it, and that's the greater chunk of the patients with glaucoma. And that type of glaucoma is usually symptomless in the early phases. By the time people start to notice that there's something wrong, oh, I'm not seeing things properly, about 17, 90% of the damage has already it's been taken gone. place. Before we get into the things that could cause um, glaucoma or the risk factors, let's, what's the difference between um, cataract and glaucoma? Cataract is opacity of the crystalline lens, and the lens is in the anterior part of the eye becomes cloudy. So patients will say things like, oh, my vision appears smoky, or it's as if there's hamatan haze. They just have this white, foggy feeling to their vision. Cataract is the leading cause of blindness, but the good thing, and it's usually age-related, although like in glaucoma, there are also other things that cause cataracts. But the good thing about cataract is that visual loss due to cataract can be reversed, which we can't do with glaucoma. Glaucoma Initially, we thought glaucoma was due to raised intraocular pressure. There is a subset of glaucoma patients who have increased intraocular pressure. So the pressure builds up within the eye. said something about intraocular pressure. This will be big grammar, you know, for, for I guess, many people watching now. Can you break it down in simple language that we can easily relate to? Okay, think about the eye like a balloon or a ball that is filled with fluid and the fluid is generated or is produced within the balloon. And there's a, there are tiny outlets through which water goes out. So the eye has fluid within it, both in front and behind. Natural? Natural, okay. that's the way God made it. But the, the fluid we're more interested in, which is produced and goes out of the eye, is a watery you know, type of fluid, which is in the front 
of the eye, the aqueous humor. So that fluid is produced within the eye and flows out from the eye into the conjunctiva, joins the veins and moves out. But sometimes that outflow is not very good. So you can imagine that a continuous production of watery liquid, which ought to go out, is not going out. Pressure will build up within that spherical thing, a ball or a balloon. So that is intraocular pressure. Okay. It is a risk factor for glaucoma, but it's not the only risk factor. So some patients would come with, we have ways of measuring the pressure within the eye, and some patients will come with pressures that are high. We usually say normal pressure is between 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury, but that's you know, a range. But we then found that there were patients who still had low pressures, 12, so they fall within what we would say was normal, but they were still having optic nerve damage. So we then found out there was a subset of glaucoma known as normal pressure glaucoma. What would cause this for the water that you're describing now? Why will it stay and not, you know, just go out the, through the normal channel? It's thought that sometimes the uh, pores, they are really, really tiny. The pores through which they go out could be occluded, sometimes by inflammation sometimes by uh, particles within the eye. Cataract can actually cause a secondary glaucoma when it becomes complicated. So the cataract, the lens particles could plug the hole. If there's an injury and there was bleeding within the eye, the blood, the fibrin produced can block the hole. So many things. And then some people... Trauma to the eye? Yes, trauma to the eye. Like a slap or something? Like a slap, a fist injury, a stone injury, cane injury. And the thing about trauma is that sometimes the glaucoma may take 10, 15 years to develop. So my advice is if anybody has ever had an injury to the eye, you should see an eye doctor annually. Because sometimes it just creeps up at some point. And usually in routine eye history, we we'll always ask, have you ever had an injury to your eye? Because it's so relevant, even 20 years down the line. Do we have anything to do with diet? Um, nutrition is good, generally, for the whole body. And it's thought that for those people who have normal pressure glaucoma, it's thought that the eye could be reacting to toxins that are not properly um, metabolized or properly gotten rid of or free radicals which are generated. So good nutrition is good and then it's, we give an adjunctive, like a, a supportive uh, therapy by giving antioxidants as a multivitamin supplements which help to mop up free radicals. But that's not the mainstay of treatment. It's an adjunct, something supportive. So it's not that there is a mechanism. So there's a role for good nutrition, balanced nutrition Good health, exercise, it's some studies have shown that moderate exercise, jogging thrice a week, could actually lower intraocular pressure. Okay. And how common is glaucoma in Nigeria? Glaucoma is very common. If you are on duty as the consultant of the monologist, how many of glaucoma cases would you see in a week? In a week? Um, I run two new clinics, two new patient clinics every week, and I see a minimum of 30, 40 patients. About half of them could be glaucoma patients. It is that bad, yes. So is there anything particular in our environment that is fueling this? I think what is most important is our genes. Glaucoma is thought to be commoner in the people of African descent. It's commoner, it's more prevalent, it starts much earlier, more likely to cause blindness more difficult to treat. So I think it's a genetic thing. And there's a lot of research going into the genetics of glaucoma. And it's possible that with time, we may be able to offer some treatment at the molecular level before it's even... Um, Gets but, aggravated. Yes, all of that. Okay, let's talk more about the risk factors now. Yes. The risk factors for glaucoma being of African descent, age, the older one gets, the higher the risk of glaucoma. A positive family history of glaucoma. Before you move on, age, are you excluding children? Um, that's the challenge with glaucoma. There are different subsets of glaucoma. If I'm t the risk factors I'm mentioning are more for primary open angle glaucoma. There are children can have glaucoma. Children can be born with glaucoma. Congenital. Congenital glaucoma, juvenile glaucoma. But their type of glaucoma is more genetic. 
there's obvious genetic issues with the children. Okay. And um, so, so the risk factors for adults um, age, usually people above 40, we have seen 28 year olds with glaucoma. But like I said, it's a disease that can run through an entire lifetime, you know. So um, myopia, people that are short sighted are slightly at risk. And sometimes it's um, probably because their discs look like optic that like the optic nerve of a glaucoma patient. Um, sleep apnea, um, people that have obstructive sleep apnea, who um, have uh, periods where they stop breathing while they are sleeping and they are not even aware, that can affect optic uh, nerve perfusion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so those are uh, basically some of the things. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what are the signs to look out for? You, you said um, sometimes it's blurry vision. Blurry vision, and most glaucoma patients will not say something like, oh, everywhere looks smoky. They'll just say, my vision looks dark. For people who have very high pressures, about 40, 50 millimeters of mercury, they could tell you, oh, when I look at a bulb, I see rainbow colors around bulbs, and that's a very important sign for glaucoma. Sometimes they just say, my vision fluctuates. I wake up in the morning, I'm not seeing so well. By evening, it clears a bit. And some people would say something, I found this very unusual, I haven't seen it in any textbook. But a lot of my patients would say something like, Doctor, I feel there's water in my eye that wants to come out, but it hasn't come out. And I, I haven't found a term for that yet, but it, it rings a bell. And a lot of times they have glaucoma. Okay, and all of these symptoms and signs you mentioned is not what we should wait for. No, definitely So tell us about how often not. should we get our eyes checked for glaucoma and, of course, for any other eye Defects. For, for glaucoma, I'll suggest annually, minimum once a year. And if there's any family history of unexplained blindness or glaucoma, probably every six months. Yeah. Okay. And what about treatment? Oh, there's a lot happening in terms of treatment. There are drugs that are available, and there's a wider range now than when glaucoma was first discovered. Laser therapy is available. Surgery is available. In Nigeria? In Nigeria, definitely. So it's not, it's not a death sentence, and it doesn't mean a person is going blind, but it means I'd rather tell patients, don't reject glaucoma and say, oh, I can't have it. Reject what follows glaucoma by helping to detect it early, early. presenting early, yeah. even before symptoms occur. Okay, and uh, if, if we talk about genetics and we talk about things that we can't really hold on to, how can we prevent glaucoma? We can't prevent glaucoma from occurring, but, but we can prevent blindness from glaucoma from occurring by the early diagnosis and treatment. Or we can prevent some types of glaucoma from occurring. Glaucoma that is secondary to trauma, like creating a she safer slapping. environment, yeah. So, a safer <laughs> environment. Because we think that uh, slapping <laughs> is a form of punishment. Yes, and then uh, protective eyewear in the workplaces, in industries, and prompt treatment and regular follow up, even subsequently. Schools, a lot of we see a lot of children who've got cane injury, you know, trauma, accidental injuries. We need to create a safer environment and educate children. Parents, teachers, and protect the our eyes yes. from, from dust and from impact. impact. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for your time. Yeah, Thank you. Anytime. Thanks. It's all about catching glaucoma and indeed any other eye condition before it's too late. So take that step today. Visit the optometrist or ophthalmologist for your eye screening.